before I begin talking about how we are going to address this problem, I just want to take a minute to cite some old, older, more famous people who have recognized that this is a very important problem. So it, at the Security Challenges Workshop a few years ago, Steve Bullivan observed that even if we know the security properties of single systems, we don't know the properties of composed systems. And that is, in fact, one of the big challenges in computer security. Another observation due to Jeanette Wing is that, and this is going to show up later on in the talk, is that the challenge in achieving com compositional security is that security is a global property. Yet the only way we know how to build big systems is by using smaller pieces. But when we put small pieces together, it is difficult to predict the consequences of their composition. And that is precisely the problem of compositional security that we are trying to address in this work. So let me begin by focusing on two central ideas that will drive the technical development uh, of this work on compositional security. To give you a sense of the first problem, let me quickly run through a few examples of secure systems and the associated adversary models. So if you think about a system where you have a BIOS at the lowest level and on top of that there's an operating system and on top of that there's a web server, and you want to say something about the guarantees that the web server provides, then you have to potentially consider an adversary either running on the same system that could maybe have certain access to certain operating system, may have compromised parts of the operating system and so forth. And it could also be at the application level and might have compromised some other application running on that same system. Another example Coming back to our web mashup examples, that if you have a composed system of this form, then in some of these frames, you might have trusted programs that are running, but in some other frames, you might have an adversary, a malicious adversary that has complete control of that frame. A third example would be something like a hypervisor, like Xen or VMware, which runs below the operating system. And in that case, you might have honest programs controlling certain virtual machines, but certain other virtual machines might be controlled by the adversary. In any case, before we want to start talking about compositional security in a general form, one question that we have to address is, how can we uniformly model adversaries against these different classes of systems? And ideally, what we would like to do is to have a generic way of doing this. It is possible and we have done that in previous work, that you can focus on a specific domain. Say you focus on network protocols. And that for that domain, you might have a canonical adversary model. And then when you reason compositionally about cryptographic protocols, network protocols, then you reason with respect to that adversary. However, if you want a theory that spans across system security or different classes of systems, and, develop, and, and our goal is to develop reasoning principles of that form, then we want this reasoning to be parametric in the adversary models. So the first question that we need to address is how can we uniformly model adversaries against different classes of systems? And the main idea here, and I will provide more details as we go along, is, to, is this notion of interface-confined adversaries where the adversary will be defined in terms of the interfaces to the system that it has access to. So if you want to think about concrete examples, an adversary against a web browser might, have, might be defined by saying, oh, this adversary runs in a frame, and it has access to all these browser interfaces that are exposed and protected using various policies. So for example, the adversary might have access to the DOM uh, in the browser, but then it will be protected by the same origin. Its access will be protected by the uh, same origin policy, or it might have access to other interfaces in the browser, like the post message, uh, interframe communication interfaces, which could also be protected by certain mechanisms. In the case of a network protocol adversary, the interfaces are very different. If you think about an adversary against SSL, then the, it, it typically the 
model for such protocols is, for, for such adversaries, is that they have complete control over the network, but then they only get to interact with these SSL client and server programs that are running at the endpoints through these well-defined interfaces. So you can send a client hello message to a server or a server hello message to a client and so forth. Okay, so this is the first idea. And instances of this idea have been around in the literature, so it's not a huge leap of faith to go from what has been done before to getting to this point. What's novel and more uh, specifically interesting about this work is how we use this in the context of compositional security and have a generic way of talking about compositional security. So that's the first idea. The second idea is the compositional security principle itself. So how do we uh, recall the question? Our goal is to prove that S1 composed with S2 is secure based on properties of S1 and S2 that are provable separately. And the idea here is what we call rely guarantee in the presence of interface confined adversaries. So at a very high level, the idea is that in proving the security of the composed system S1 and S2, each will rely on the properties that they're provably guaranteed to satisfy in the presence of interface confined adversaries. So both S1 and S2 will make some assumptions about how the other guy will act. And we can separately show that each will respect each other's assumptions and guarantees. So that may sound a little abstract. So let me give you a simple example of how this idea might apply to protecting a secret in a group. Right? So suppose that there is some secret information that you and I want to share and we don't want anyone else to know that secret. Now, to maintain that property, I will have to exchange information, exchange messages containing that secret in a way that from, that secret, from those messages, only you can acquire the secret, and then you have to act in the same way. So, so one example of something like this shows up in protocols like Kerberos, which protect secrets, which ensure that secrets are only shared by two or three people. And in that in network protocol case, the way that is achieved is by using encryption. So every occurrence of the message containing the secret that is sent out on the network will always be under encryption with a key that is only known to the group to which we want to, to, it, to whom we want to constrain that secret. And then actions taken by parties in the group will always pre locally preserve this global property. So let's assume, to make things more concrete, let's assume that there is some predicate like safe network or something that keeps track of that is true if the secret is only known to the three of us, the three people who should know the secret. And then under the assumption that safe network is preserved, if we locally only perform actions like sending out the secret encrypted with keys that are only known to the three of us, then under this assumption, each of us will act in a way that will continue to preserve this secret. Right? So that is what I mean when I say that S1 and S2 each rely on these properties from each other that can, in fact, be provably guaranteed, even in the presence of adversaries that are confined to certain interfaces. OK? So those are the two main ideas. One is a generic way of talking about adversary models that spans across classes of systems. The second is this idea of rely guarantee reasoning extended to a setting with adversaries. So again, rely guarantee reasoning is not new to our work. This has been known for system correctness for 25 years now. It goes all the way back to work by Chandi and Mishra in the early 80s, and then Jones and Pignoli and a number of other people. What is missing from that prior work is that they were reasoning about system correctness, so it was only constrained to the case where you knew everyone's programs. And this work extends it to a setting with um, this class of interface confined adversaries. OK, so that's the high-level idea. The next thing I want to do now is 
to run through these ideas at a little bit more detail.